All right, moving on to part three of limits at infinity. So we saw how to evaluate them with those first two guidelines, when the denominator, the bigger the deg degree, or when the degrees were equal. So now let's look at it when we've got the numerator having a bigger degree. Okay, so this one, the numerator has a larger degree. Uh, so it's gonna go off to positive infinity. You don't need to worry about a coefficient because anything times infinity is still infinity. Okay, so let's look at the second one. Uh, X is going on to negative infinity. The numerator has the bigger degree. So it's gonna go off to negative infinity. So like, wait a minute, why are they different? Well, now you really do have to be cognizant of the signs and like what you're approaching and the signs are actually in the problem. So when X goes off to positive infinity, that means you're approaching like really big positive numbers. So if you stick in like positive 10,000 to the top, it's a positive. Stick it to the denominator, it's a positive, which makes everything positive. Moving over to this one, now it's the flip. Now it's like negative 10,000, negative a million, and so on and so forth. So the numerator, no matter what you plug in there, the numerator is always going to be a positive because you're going to square it. But the denominator, that's now a negative. So the numerator is a positive, the denominator is a negative, positive over negative is a negative. So keep in mind what you're approaching and what signs are in there and how they play around with each other. All right, so example I, uh, X is going off to infinity. So again, the numerator in this example has a larger degree. So it's gonna be some sort of infinity. So you have to decide which one it is. So as X goes off to positive infinity, so 10,000, a million, 100 million, if you stick those in for X, the square makes it a positive, but times a negative, that makes it a negative. And underneath, if you stick in those really big positive numbers for X, the denominator is going to come out as a positive. So negative over positive is a negative. So looking at example J, again, the numerator has a larger degree, so it's an infinity. And let's figure out which one it is. So plug it in big negative numbers. So if you squared it, that's a positive. But times a negative two, hey, that's now a negative. Underneath, if you plugged in a really big negative number for that x, now the denominator is going to come out as a negative, and a negative over negative is a positive. So we're going to just leave this the way it is. Okay, so now let's look at some that don't really fit. Uh, with those guidelines, uh, or do they? So in an example of K, it's like, well, you don't really have a degree because you got that square root over a quantity. Um, but again, we're only interested in the, the terms that have the biggest power or the terms that actually tell you the degree. So the top, you know, it has a degree of one. And if you look at down here underneath, you only have to pay attention to the term with the highest power in it. So that would be your x squared. So the one, it's not going to do anything. It doesn't really matter. So if you looked at this, if you ignore the one, it's the square root of x squared, which hopefully we all know is really just x. Well, x to the first. Well, now look at what you've got. You've got a tie. So even though it really doesn't have a degree, because that's not a, um, it's a, it's a rational function, uh, or sorry, it's a radical function, um, you can still kind of manipulate it to use those guidelines. Um, so one, one, so one over one is one. <clears throat> okay, so now this problem over here, you can kind of do the same thing. So again, you can ignore everything that's in that radical except for the x squared. So the, the plus one, you can just drop it out. 
square root it, and it's still just x. Well, now we're going off to negative infinity, so that could possibly play a role in this. So as you plugged in negative numbers in for x, that makes the top a negative, right? Well, if you plugged in negative numbers into the denominator, um, you gotta keep in mind you're gonna square this, which makes it positive, and then when you square root it, like we did down here, it's still gonna come out as a positive. So this time you have a negative over a positive, so it's a negative one instead of a positive one. All right, part M, uh, now it's just going back to the degrees again. Uh, so the degree of this is three over two, the degree of the denominator is a two. So that is a big old zero. All right, this one over here, example N, there's no degree in this thing whatsoever. Um, e does not have a degree. So now you gotta kinda use some reasoning skills. So you're plugging in a negative infinity, so what I kinda like to do, and I'm a little unique in this, but it definitely kinda helps. I'm gonna just stick in the negative infinity in for x. This is really an indeterminate form. It does not yield an actual number or value, but it's gonna do what we want, what we need it to do. Okay, so what does a negative exponent do to something? Well, it flips it, it makes it, it's gonna throw that into the denominator. So you have five over e to infinity, or five over e to like a really, 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 really big number. Well, if your denominator is getting super huge, that is going to make the fraction itself, the whole fraction, go off to zero. Because it's just making the fraction smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, so this fraction is going to go down to zero. So the limit in that case is just two. Okay, so we can kind of do something similar for this next one. You can stick in the infinity because there's no degree to get out of this. And again, the negative exponent is going to flip it. And when you're involved in a quantity like this, like 4 minus, and this is the term you have to flip, it flips it where it is. So it's not going to flip it up next to the 8 because it, it still has that 4 to deal with. So it's gonna flip it, and it's gonna stay down here underneath the eight. Okay, so let's look at what we have. Infinity divided by two is still pretty much infinity. It's still really, really big. Well, 10 to a really, 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 really big number is still a really, 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 really big number. One divided by a really, 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 really big number is really, really, really close to zero. So this, weird looking fraction is, oops, that's an eight up there. This fraction here is just gonna go down to zero. So that equals two. Now they don't always equal two like this, that's just kinda how they, use, they came out. It's fun like that. Okay, now example P, uh, and then we'll uh, cut this off. Um, cause this one's different too. There's nothing to flip. Uh, sine is its own little creature. Um, but you gotta remember sine or cosine for that matter, they're always trapped between one and negative one. They don't go higher, they don't go lower. But the denominator, there's no bound on that. The denominator is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So you've got something that can't on the top can't get bigger than one but the denominator is going to go off to like 10,000, a million, a hundred million. So that's pulling the fraction down to zero. I guess I could put a plus or minus there. But it's not going to matter. Whether it's positive or negative, it's still going to go off to zero. Okay, these last two, you guys can look at the notes that I posted online. Um, and then... Uh, that'll do it.